A darkness shall befall upon the land. That's jolly, isn't it? Throughout history, it's not jolly. It's terrifying. Eclipses are terrifying, especially when you look up at the sky and you don't have science. You look up there and you're like, we don't have any science. This must be some terrible thing. So in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about some of the superstitions that are still around despite having science uh, that you know tells us exactly what's happening during an eclipse. And then we're going to go through some of the old, uh, I guess, cultural beliefs and just kind of have a little bit of fun, talk about them, make you aware of some of them, and then we can joke around in the comments about these things. So currently, we still have people who run around and spout nonsense whenever there's an eclipse. We know that an eclipse is when the sun... Uh, and, the, and the moon get in a straight line and the moon blocks our view of the sun so all we can see is the corona that's during the you know totality we see the corona of the sun it's like whoa what is that wispy stuff and you know everything gets dark it's really eerie and creepy i mean it, it just feels something feels wrong it doesn't feel like twilight it doesn't feel like the sun's going down it just it's in the middle of the day and the light doesn't look the same. The ground looks strange. The shadows are weird. Sometimes the mountains in the distance will still be bright because, you know, you're, you, the mountains in the distance may be miles and miles and miles away. So they're still going to be in the light and you're in the umbra. They're in the penumbra or they're outside of the penumbra. So it's, it's weird if you don't know these things. Even still, we have people in some parts of the world who believe that, you know, an eclipse means that women are going to get miscarriages uh, or in India some cultures there believe that it's you can't cook anything don't cook anything don't make anything it's all going to be un, you know like unpure impure I don't know and then in Italy they believe it's a good time to plant vegetables and crops because they're going to or flowers or whatever because they're going to come out and bloom uh, more vibrantly and brighter and all that sort of thing uh, and then we have uh, in America here uh, I guess Christianity is the big thing and they're all talking about, you know, the coming apocalypse, the, the end times and all that sort of thing. And so we have all these things here on Godvine. If you look through here, there's people here saying that God's giving us, a, you know, a message. We need to repent. And also, since this eclipse went all the way from west to east, all the way across America, God's message is directly how, guys, it couldn't be any more clear. God is angry. He's sending the darkness all the way across to warn us. Uh, some are saying that. Some other ones are saying that this one's interesting from from Scott Clark. He's a Christian leader in America, and he's saying, "Hey, listen, listen. It could have happened anywhere, but it happened right at Leo, the constellation Leo. It started there. Leo is the lion, the lion of the tribe of Judah. It's heralding the return of the King, who is God. You know, God's coming back. The whole like rapture and all that business is upon us. Uh, and not all Christians believe these things. A lot of Christians know." exactly what it is. They know it's, you know, easily explained by science. And over the years, as, you know, our understanding of things grows, the need for religious explanations or ridiculous explanations um, just kind of fades away. And that's sort of the message of this entire video is that, you know, as we, as we keep moving forward, guys, science can explain. We just need better tools to understand it. We need to conduct more tests. We need better particle accelerators, and so on and so on. All right, so let's look uh, through the history and just see what happened when eclipses occurred way back in the past and what people believed in that sort of thing. The first mention in the Bible is back in Amos. <laughs> God, God was angry back then. So God is mad because a bunch of people are, um, I guess, just swindling one another. They're using, you know, fake scales that are weighted like this instead of weighted like this and just taking money from people. So God gets mad and he's like, you know what? That's it. Famine on you guys, plagues. I'm going to have dead bodies everywhere. And he says, like, you know, he's going to turn the, 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 the freaking the music into wailing. And I'll just read some of this here because it's kind of funny. He says he's going to make the sun go down at noon and will darken the earth in broad daylight. That's the mention of the eclipse there. Uh, he says he's going to turn the religious festivals into mourning singing into weeping, and I'll make you wear sackcloth and shave your heads. <laughs> uh, so yes, that's pretty uh, severe, God. Let's, let's, uh, let's move away from Christianity and just look around the world. A lot of uh, different people thought that the sun was being eaten by something, by whether it be a demon or a dragon or, or a wolf or whatever. So we look in China and they thought it was either a dog or a dragon that was trying to eat the sun. And whenever they saw it, they were like, oh, no, 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 the sun's getting the sun's getting eaten. Everyone outside, we've got to scare away whatever's eating the sun. So they would come outside and bang on their pots and pans and scream and like, get out of here, you stupid sun eating animal. And of course, it would leave. And they'd be like, OK, that worked. Let's do it again next time. 
it'll surely work next time. Now, they actually had some science back then, too. Like, they understood a, a, a few things. Uh, I mean, they, they've, they've understood the science behind this for, you know, years and years, hundreds of years B, B.C. But even still, they wanted to know when these things were going to happen so they could be ready to scare off whatever was going to eat the, the sun. There's a couple of examples in, in past of, like, you know, astronomers or whatever missing I guess just missing it, and then uh, you know an eclipse occurs, and the emperor's like, you know what, hi and ho, you two astronomers, you did not predict this, you're dead, kill them. That's pretty extreme. Uh, the Vikings believed that it was uh, a couple of wolves that were chasing around the the sun and the moon, and this is kind of a fun story because they've got these two wolves, they're out there, giant ghost wolves or whatever, they're chasing around the sun and the moon, uh, Hati and Skull, and they're chasing around the sun and the moon, and then when they start eating them that's when the eclipse occurs and this this goes for both lunar and solar eclipses they start eating them and then they have to come out and yell and like shout and then can you imagine the scene like the sky's going dark everything's getting colder everything's freaking out people are like no go outside and yell at the sky and then you know they scared them off the legend says that you know when the wolves finally do actually eat the moon and the sun it's going to uh it's going to be Ragnarok, which is basically like uh, the apocalypse, end of the world type thing. There's one more, I guess the uh, the Pomo tribe, the, a lot of the tribal stuff uh, here in, in, in the Americas, North and South America has been lost due to all the, you know, all the conquerors coming over here and destroying everything. And also the stuff in Egypt, it's kind of a gray area because burning of the library of Alexandria, a lot of the written records are just gone. Uh, back in Babylon, they actually had really accurate charts and five, 600 BC, they were predicting with some accuracy where the eclipses are going to occur. So Babylonians, man, the Pomo tribe thought it was a bear. And they're like, oh, just some bear. And he was just kind of wandering around and he decides to like snack on the moon or the sun or whatever. So that's what they believed. Um, South America, they thought that whenever this occurred, it was just going to mean disease and famine and that sort of thing in some places. But it's, again, a lot of that's gray. Here's a couple of my favorites because they don't involve the eating of the sun. They're, they're different. Uh, a little bit different and a little bit more elaborate. So Togo and Benin, uh, two countries in Africa, uh, they believed that there were two women uh, who were the original women, like, you know, the, the first women on earth, and they became sort of the, the matriarchs of their society. And they were always trying to keep people from squabbling and bickering and quarreling and all that sort of thing. And what they would do is, um, if, if it got really bad, they just basically turn off the sun. Now turn off the lights, you guys need to stop. And everyone be like, oh shit, okay, yeah, we, we, better, we better listen up. And then they would offer peace offerings and everything and, and make, make nice with each other. And still to this day, that's still their custom. Whenever the, you know, the eclipse occurs, they offer up peace offerings to one another just as, as like a reminder. Um, this is probably my favorite one. It's because it's just so out there. And Hinduism believes that it's a disembodied demon head floating around. And the demon head is that of uh, Rahu or Raha. Yeah, Raha, I believe it is. I'm not sure if that's correct or not. Anyway, he's a demon, and then a couple gods got together with him, and they made um, an elixir of mortality. Because they're all immortal, of course. They've got this elixir of mortality. Why would they even make this? I mean, it's like, we should never drink. We should never drink this, but let's make it. Yeah, yeah. If we drink that, we're going to die. But right now, we're not going to die. So let's, just, let's make it anyway. So anyway, I guess Raha got really curious and decided he was going to go take a sip of it. And then the gods found out, and they're like, no, we're going to behead you. So it affected his body and his body died, but his head, it lived on. And it just sort of floats around out there trying to eat the sun. And the problem is whenever he tries to eat the sun, his body's gone. So he can't hold on to it. He can't, can't grip it. And it always gets away. But that's what the eclipse is, is when he's out there trying to eat the sun. Now we think, look at these, like, well, this is stuff's just, just crazy, right? Right? It's just completely crazy. Well, a lot of these things were thought of they were like, this is literal, guys. It's not like this is really what's happening up there. Because they didn't know. They didn't have the science to back it up. They didn't They didn't have understanding. And without reference and understanding, I mean, we, we used to think the earth was flat. We still think the earth was flat. We need science. We need it badly. It explains things like, you know, things like the apocalypse, which we now know is just the eclipse. Uh, and, and it's turned from something that's terrifying and evil and awful into something that's eerie and one of the most splendid demonstrations um, in the celestial body that you can see with the in the celestial bodies out there that you can see with the naked eye um, so now we understand it and the more we learn the more we can understand so 
do everything you can to uh, further science. That's my little message right there. Grab a t-shirt, guys. Go ahead, get one. What, what t-shirt is this? Oh, how appropriate. I was wearing a, a different Burning Earth shirt at the Eclipse when I was there. And people were like, well, that's different. Because everyone's running around with these Eclipse shirts. That's going to be cool for one day of the year. But but they were like, oh, that's a neat one. What's the, that's, why is it on fire? I got that a lot yesterday. Anyway, let us know what you think. Let me know what your uh, favorite interesting custom is that, uh, you know, has now been proven, proven silly by science. But, uh, you know, if you have a favorite one or one that I didn't mention, you guys can talk about it in the comments. And, uh, yeah, go in science. <laughs>